Good evening and welcome to this Central Area Planning Committee meeting on Wednesday the 16th of March 2022. My name is Councillor Kevin Lagan and I'm the Chair of this committee. Members, we are streaming this meeting live as well as a recording and by being present in the meeting you are giving your consent to being recorded. During each item please put your hand up to indicate if you wish to speak I will then invite you at the appropriate time. Please note that the YouTube live stream sound recording is dependent on the correct use of microphones. Therefore, can I ask you when invited to speak, you remember to turn on your microphone and turn it off when finished. Please reference a page or paragraph number when referring to the agenda papers and keep your contributions as clear and concise as possible. Finally, can I draw your attention to the notices on the agenda paper uh, regarding the different levels in the chamber which seem to have been fixed and, and please be aware in the event of a fire please exit by the fire exits marked with the green running man. Bernard, could I have apologies for absence please? Thank you Chairman. We've received apologies for absence from councillors Anne Beale, Mays and Stills. Thank you very much Bernard. Moving on, uh, the minutes of the previous meeting it is recommended that the minutes of the meeting held on the 27th of January 2022, found on pages 7 to 12, are approved as a true and accurate record. I say move. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Nunn. Thank you, Councillor Nunn. Can we agree those minutes by assent, members? Thank you, members. Declarations of interest. To disclose the existence and nature of any disclosable pecuniary interests, other pecuniary interests or non-pecuniary interests relating to items of business on the agenda, having regard to paragraphs 6 to 8 inclusive of the Code of Conduct for Members. Members are reminded that they are also required to disclose any such interests as soon as they become available, uh, sorry, my apologies, as soon as they become aware and should need to the need arise throughout the meeting. Do I have any declarations of interest? Councillor Shaughnessy. Lovely. Thanks very much indeed, Councillor Shawnee. There are no others. Okay, so we move on to uh, agenda item five, which is 21 slash 01283 slash full New Lodge Dykes Chase Malden Essex CM96 HP. Miss Bowles, could you please present the report? Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> the plan of permission is sought for the demolition of an existing garage and the erection of a new dwelling. We've got the location plan and the site currently forms part of the residential cartilage of New Lodge, which is located here to the east. We have the existing and proposed block plans. You see the comparison. You've got the garage building fist in there and the proposed dwelling. We've got the elevations of the existing garage and the proposed elevations of the dwelling. Um, as you can see, the topography of the land, due to the topography of the land, the front elevation appears as a shallow bungalow with a room in the roof. Um, however, it is a three-storey dwelling. And we've got the proposed floor plans and the proposed street scene elevation. The red line shows the road level here. And whilst the built form at the site has increased, the scale of the proposed dwellings not considered to be out of keeping with the existing neighbouring dwellings. And then here we've got a proposed street view. Uh, the top picture shows the street as existing and the bottom picture you can see the new dwelling has been added. Then we've got photos to the front of the site. and the neighbouring dwellings and we've got photos from within the site where you can see the land slopes quite severely and that's the back of the garage you can see there. Oh, apologies. So the application site has previously been found acceptable for the development of a dwelling house. The permission was approved in 2010 but has subsequently expired. 
the site's located in a sustainable location and the proposed dwelling have in regard to the previous level of built form found acceptable at the site is considered to have an acceptable visual impact on the site and surrounding heritage assets. Further, the dwelling is not considered to detrimentally impact the neighbouring occupiers and would be served by an acceptable level of amenity space and car parking provision. Therefore, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed, Hannah. Um, members, we have one public participant, the agent, Mr Ransom, and in line with the public participation scheme, I now invite Mr Ransom to read out his submission. Uh, Mr Ransom, if you would come to the, the horseshoe, please, and choose a microphone. Just to let you know, you'll have two minutes to make your case. Two minutes started? Not yet, we're just getting okay. the timer up on the I'll let you know. Okay, when you're ready. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, councillors, and thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening um, in favour of this application for a new dwelling at New Lodge Dykes Chase. My name is Andrew Ransom, and I'm the agent acting on behalf of the applicants, Mr Tim Titchmarsh and Mrs Joe Ward. The committee report succinctly sets out the planning merits for the case and why it should be approved planning permission, so I don't wish to repeat those comments, but rather just highlight a few pertinent points. By way of background, Tim and Joe have lived in Malden for almost 20 years and raised their family here. Um, their children have now left home and they wish to downsize and um, for the next part of their life adventure wish to self-build a new home together. Um, they have a passion for heritage and conservation, having previously owned a 17th century listed farmhouse and it's that passion for heritage that's led, the, led them to this project at Dykes Chase. The application site had a previous approval for a contemporary home at this location. However, Tim and Joe instead wanted a design that better reflected the historic maritime traditions of Malden and the conservation area. Using the parameters set by the previous approval, the design and appearance has moved forward to better reflect the existing character of Malden through the use of the proposed materials, the form and the detailing. This design has been subject to a positive and proactive pre-application discussions with both the council's planner, planners and the conservation officer. The outcome of these discussions um, has led to refinements of the design. It's, it is those refinements that, um, that are subject to this planning application right now. Um, Tim and Joe have also employed structural engineers and qualified professionals throughout the project to better understand the constraints of this unique, uh, unique site and to ensure that this new building would protect the amenity and neighbours of, neighbours of the surrounding area. They're very passionate about this house, and this is a project they've been planning for two years with great enthusiasm. I hope you can agree that this dwelling would make an attractive addition to Dykes Chase and that it's res respectful to the historic setting. And I hope that you can support and approve this application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ransom. Really imperfect timing. Thank you. Uh, members, I now open the debate and invite you to put any questions or make any comments you have on the report. Um, as this is a member calling by Councillor Shaughnessy, I'd like to invite Councillor Shaughnessy if she wishes to speak first. Thank you very much, Chairman. I appreciate that. Um, first of all, I'd just like to um, draw everyone's attention to um, uh, when the young lady, sorry, um, Hannah, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Um, put the um, um, scene up from from back in the street. Um, the little outline of the building was black, but I believe it's actually going to be white, painted white in the um, uh, in the text, and and so therefore it will um, show up much more. Um, right. I'd like to draw your attention to page fifteen, three point one point one, which is the first paragraph relating to this proposal. Um, and it says the, um, the site is to the north of Dykes Chase, which is accessed off Beely Road. Um, it, it's not accessed off Beely Road. There is only a footpath coming off Beely Road. So I think for clarity um, that that should be changed. Thank you. And, um, uh, and, and indeed, later on in the text, it mentions that um, there is a footpath going across the front um, of the property and indeed down um, towards um, Beely Abbey. Um, the access, of course, is via um, Dykes Chase Stroke Lodge Road, off London Road. Um, and it is indeed, um, I'm, I'm still with 3.1.1, it is indeed right next to a locally listed heritage asset. 
um, hilly field um, and of course the Leach Memorial Garden. Just like to um, emphasise those two points. Thank you very much. With reference to D1 of the LDP, um, this proposal does not enhance the character and local context, nor does it make a positive contribution in terms of style, scale and proportion. Um, I mean, the, the, the front of it is, is simply too tall. Um, as far as landscape setting and skyline, this will have a detrimental impact on the surrounding area, um, policy D3. It will be the first building seen from London Road as you turn into um, Dykes Stroke Lodge. Um, and therefore, I think it will be an eyesore. Relating to H4 of the LDP, this is not effective use of land. 5.3.4 on page 20, the shared concrete frontage with New Lodge is very untidy and does nothing to enhance the nearby, nearby i.e. next door, heritage asset, which is Hilly Field. Have any planning officers visited the site, bearing in mind the heritage assets? 5.3.3 on page 19, li lines 3, 4 and 5. How will this proposal enhance the special character, appearance and setting of Hilly Fields, the heritage a a asset, which is indeed right next door? 5.3.11, how can this proposal not be overly prominent or overbearing to the site or street scene. Uh, thank you, Chairman. That's uh, that's all I have to say for the moment. Thank mm, thanks very much indeed. Um, Anna and Alex, would you want to answer any of those now or do you want to come back? Um, through you, Chair, I can confirm I have visited the site. I don't know if we could bring up the street scene again. I think just for information, it's my understanding is it's to show the massing and form rather than uh, the colour and overall appearance. Uh, so it's more for information only. Um, and yeah, as you can see, that due to the changes in levels of the site, um, it would be somewhat obscured from uh, the most prominent views. In terms of uh, D3, um, I would refer to. Uh, it has been subject to consultation with the uh, heritage specialist who has recommended no objection subject to conditions which officers agree with taking into account the scale size uh, location changes in topography at the site and um, its relationship to other buildings in the area thank you council does that answer any of your questions Thank you, Councillor Shawnee. Thank you. Councillor Nunn. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm conscious that the site is within the curtilage of one of the most important parts of the town's heritage, which is the um, Anglo-Saxon Burr. And whenever there's been development previously in this area, I've always thought that there have been an archaeological condition uh, on uh, the development. But I, unless I've missed it, I can't see anything in the documentation that either re references the Anglo-Saxon site or the archaeology or a condition or indeed um, any um, consultation with um, the archaeological section of Essex County Council within the list of consultees. Uh, rem re remembering, of course, that our conservation officer is prim primarily about built heritage as opposed to archaeology. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dunn. Alex. Uh, thank you for your comments. I'm just going to have a look at our constraints, if you just bear with me. So I can confirm in terms of the archaeology. So, Councillor, are you saying that with regard to this application, that um, should the 
the recommendation be be tabled in a moment you'd like an amendment and an additional condition if there's not a condition in there um, if it, if it proceeds i would most certainly and not just me but i think many people would expect there to be some kind of archaeological investigation at least a watching brief as it's within the curtilage of the burr indeed the the term dykes chase is based on the dyke of the burr huh? so uh, all the sites in Beeley road have had conditions on them london road uh, so i'm at a loss to know why there's been no archaeological uh, consultation or condition thank you yes, i think we'll have to come back to you on that one whilst we uh, just check the maps if that's okay but we, we we will answer that query. Thank you, Councillor Hurd. Um, thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, I've listened very carefully to uh, uh, what has been said so far, um, including the agent. Um, however, I do not agree that it is an attractive addition, uh, and whether it's in keeping or not, I think is very subjective. Um, I find this uh, out of character for the area. And I think it will form uh, an incongruous dominant feature. Um, I don't accept that it's uh, hidden by the others. Uh, looking at the at the new dwelling, I can see that it's actually higher than the other ones. So uh, I think it's a, a question of uh, subjectivity. Thank you, Councillor Hurd. Councillor Swain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, I am a bit puzzled about the, these height figures that have been um, uh, included in the in the, um, the write-up uh, that would seem to be slightly conflicting. Um, it is um, taller, whatever that means in this um, situation, but I'm particularly concerned about how the height will appear um, in the view across the river, which is said to be of an important um, uh, aspect of this whole issue. Um, uh, because of its height and the slope, it presumably wouldn't be actually basked by even substantial trees uh, further down the hill. Um, and um, following on from what Councillor Nunn has said about no archaeological view, um, there's no a statement really from an environmental. And I wonder who uh, has come to the view, which I think is expressed in here, that the impact on the view across the river is, is satisfactory. Um, to my mind, this is going to um, stand out inevitably, uh, which is a function of the height, particularly. Um, the one or two comments that are made in justifying, which I find a little bit weak, particularly relating to the NPPF, um, which I, uh, in, in terms of sustainability and so on, I, I really find not terribly relevant to an individual um, building. And as uh, has been pointed out, there's a reason why it's in Dykes Chase, I suppose. Um, I, I would refer to the highways reference. I, I can't see how highways are relevant, given this is um, not a public highway. Um, but my main concern is how this will impact on the, um, the, the view across from the other side of the river. Thank you, Councillor Swain. Could you turn your microphone off, please? I wonder who came to that decision. Thank you. Anna? Through you, Chair, um, the conservation specialist um, advised that in his comments there was also a picture within the design and access statement which showed um, the long view across the conservation area <clears throat> towards the rear of the site and it pointed out where the dwelling would be and it does show, it shows the neighbouring dwelling as well and it is screened by, largely screened by vegetation so that was um, evidenced within the application and the conservation officer or specialist has um, come to that conclusion as well. Thank you Chair. Thank you. Does that give you any, any uh, satisfaction Councillor Swain? Yes. Um, Again, we're very back to subjectivity. One can accept what the conservation officer says on matters of the built environment, but when it comes to um, this kind of uh, <clears throat> of interpretation, um, I think um, our view is as good as his. Um, uh, but uh, the impact is in terms. I'm trying to interpret these heights. The actual height of the building on the downside is then. At, 10 metres or more, is that right, from the ground, 
but part of that is a sort of uh, subterranean or semi semi basement scene from up 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 the hill. Right, so it it looks it looks um, less height from the front than it does down the hill. Is that yes? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, through you chair. Yes. Thank you. Members, any other any other questions on the report? Catherine Shaughnessy. Uh, thank you. Could could I um, just make it clear that it is a private road, and so I'm um, going back to um, Councillor Swain's uh, suggestion about um, highways comment. It is ab absolutely irrelevant. Thank. Thank you. May I reply regarding the highways? Um, highways also take into account the public right of way, which I think was referred to earlier. Um, in addition, their consideration is what impact it would have. On the wider public transport network, therefore, it doesn't. The impact of a scheme doesn't. Uh, a scheme doesn't need to be directly adjacent to uh, an adopted road to have such an impact. So that's why they were consulted. Thank you, well, members. We've um, deb debated and, and given some very good points. So there is a recommendation. Oh, sorry, Councillor Nunn, do you want to come back? Um, well, I, I'm going to struggle to vote on this unless I know about the archaeology. Yeah. Well, I, what I was yeah. going to do is um, apply the recommendation um, and see if that, uh, if that fails or stands. I'll just have a quick discussion. Okay, good. Yeah. Just going to have a quick chat. Just bear with us, members. Thank you. Thank you. Reed here. In relation to the archaeology, um, it doesn't appear to be within, it's not designated to fall within that area. Um, in addition, the officer at Essex County Council who comments on the application does go through our weekly list. And if there is any that have that officers may have missed, she will pick them up and respond. So it isn't it isn't designated and we haven't received a response, um, which would lead us to believe that it doesn't fall within the area that's covered by that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. But the, the statement, um, Ms Bowles, is we, we don't believe it does, but we're not 100% sure. Yeah. Through you, Chair, I believe it would be designated if it was, and we rely on those maps, so I think it, uh, confidently say it doesn't fall within that area. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Councillor No, I'm not satisfied. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Anna. Would you, any other points you want to make or? I'm staggered if, if it's not uh, a, an area of archaeological sensitivity. It's the foundation of the town mm -hmm. in the 10th century. So I'm not convinced, I'm not satisfied, but um, I don't think we're going to be able to progress the issue any further tonight. Thank you. Okay, Councillor, thank you very much. Well, members, um, oh, sorry, Councillor Swain. So, I'll I'll to come back. Discussion. Um, is, it, is it possible then to put in a condition about archaeological um, uh, report or archaeological survey during the course of the work? It is possible, but conditions do need to meet the tests of being reasonable and necessary. Um, I can have a look at the NPPF and see the guidance on it, and I could come back to you if you just bear with me one moment. Also, just to advise that with the 2010 application, it appears, which was granted, archaeology was not considered to be an issue, just to advise. Thank you, Chair. I wasn't a councillor then. Thank you, Councillor Nunn. Um, Councillor Shaughnessy. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I completely agree with Councillor Nunn. I don't think we can make a decision on this this evening without this being fully investigated. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Shaughnessy. I have to advise that we rely on the data that we have within our databases, which map out things such as conservation areas, um, of a designated heritage assets, and that does include archaeological areas. If it doesn't say it's on there, and if the archaeological specialist in place services for the county council 
has not, uh, through their own uh, independent initiative, brought it to our attention, then I don't think it's reasonable for us to assume that it is within such an area. Okay, Councillor Shaughnessy, please. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I disagree. I, I I really think this needs to be investigated, um, the same as I feel Councillor Nunn does. Um, I mean, we are local people, myself, Councillor Nunn, um, some other councillors here. We know what is going on in our area. We know the history of our area far more than, um, if I may say, the plan. Thank you, Councillor. In regard to the condition, there is a possible argument that there could be unidentified heritage assets beneath the site. Um, it would be highly unusual, but um, there can be instances where you have unidentified heritage assets. In such, in such circumstances, there may be a justification for such a condition. Um, as I've previously advised, um, well, let me just have a look at the map. Bear with me. Um, Councillor Swain, yeah, just the yeah. last one. One more. Just come back. Say, uh, whether it, a condition is possible or not, it, something could be included as an informative, could not it? Mm -hmm. Thank you. An informative wouldn't have um, would simply be for information only. So, if we consider it to be fundamental, then um, uh, such a condition would be required. It wouldn't have the, the type of force that you might be seeking. Thank you. Well, members, I think that we've, we've debated the the issue um, in depth and there are some concerns. Um, so I'm minded to, to go to the recommendation um, and take a vote on that if it's seconded. If the recommendation fails, as always, um, then we'll come back and uh, reassess the uh, situation. Any of you anything else to add? Alex, anything else to add? No, please. Thank you. Members, would proceed. You members, would you be satisfied with this if we proceeded to the recommendation? Yep, okay. So the recommendation one is approved subject to legal agreements to secure the recreational disturbance avoidance and mitigation strategy, the RAMS contribution and the conditions as detailed in section eight of this report. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Swain, thank you. So members, I need to call for a vote on the seconded motion. So those four, would you please raise your hands? Three, those against? Three, against. That leaves the chair and myself as a casting vote. Um, having listened to the debate, I'm, I'm also minded to, to be against the, the recommendation. So members, that leaves us with a, a situation where we need to um, come up with a, another recommendation. Uh, Councillor Hurd. Um, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I recommend uh, refusal on the grounds that it is out of character for the area and forms an incongruous dominant feature due to bulk and scale and location in a conservation area. Thank you, Councillor That's Hurd. my proposal. Thank you. Uh, Bernard, did you, did you catch the uh, new proposal? Yes, yes, I did. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Members, uh, Councillor Shaughnessy. I, I wonder, with um, Councillor Hurst's permission, whether we could mention the heritage assets, you know, i.e. hilly fields right next door to this proposal. Um, I don't think it would enhance that at all. Um, and, of course, the Leach Memorial Garden is just a stone's throw away. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I, I'm happy to include um, that that we are concerned about the inconsistencies of, um, of or the lack of information in relation to the, the historical asset. Thank you, Councillor Hurd. Did you catch that, Berna? Yes, yes, lack of information with reference to the historical um, heritage site. Okay, thank you. Is that correct? Yes? Yep, that's correct, I believe, Councillor Hurd. Councillor Shaughnessy. So, officers, have you any points to make on that? Amended recommendation. Um, just in terms of, if you are minded to refuse the scheme, obviously, 
it's important not to necessarily put um, every heritage asset in the sort of surround as part of the reason for refusal. We need to be uh, clear and precise with a reason for refusal. Um, so important to identify harm uh, so that it's defendable at appeal. Well, I would have thought that those um, councillor heard what, what councillor heard note and tabled at the beginning for a recommendation um, would carry um, a decent amount of weight behind that for the harm it would cause. And um, I think the heritage loss of heritage asset. And I suppose that's councillor none had said until we get to the situation where we start to look at that, we don't really know what's there. I think uh, perhaps if I could just add to that, Chairman, that, that, that I think the, the harm in building this would outweigh the benefit of it. Thank you, Councillor Heard. So, Bernard, can you just repeat the motion, that's uh, the recommendation that's been, been um, put forward, please? Yes, yes I, I believe, believe given um, Alex's comment, given the um, planning officer's comments, I think Councillor Heard's a proposal to refuse the application on the basis of th that it is not an attractive feature in the area will be a dominant uh, feature on the landscape and the, and the, the harm in building this pro this proposal outweighs the benefit councillor heard uh, just to just to clarify uh, although it's that i feel that it's an unattractive but actually the reason that i'm that I'm making this proposal is because I think it is out of character for the area. Thank you, Councillor Heard. Councillor Nunn? Yes, yeah, sorry to complicate things, but I, 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 I personally wouldn't support an, an objection on the grounds of archaeology mm -hmm. because archaeology, I, I wanted that as a condition mm -hmm. of development. So I'm not objecting <coughs> to the development on the grounds of archaeology. I think, unless I'm putting words in councillor Hurd's mouth i think what he's talking about is the heritage asset which is next door which is hilly field and the point that councillor swain was making about this proposal being dominant to hilly field particularly in terms of its height yes much better put than i did uh, councillor well, that's, that's what, what we, we said at the very start, start. a dominant feature, feature in the landscape was what was mentioned in the past instance. We need to be clear, sorry, who is making this proposal and exactly what this proposal is. Right. Councillor Heard is making the proposal. Okay, Councillor Heard. And he, in his first proposal, he, he, he mentioned that it was a dominant feature on the landscape, which seems to chime with what's just been said as well. How, how do the planning officers feel uh, about that as a reason, valid reason, planning reason. Yeah, I mean, it's a, obviously it's a, it's a valid reason um, in the sense that it's suitably structured. Obviously, we'll need to identify policies that it's contrary to. Um, in addition, um, yeah, no, I think, I think, I think as long as we refer to the correct policies and as Councillor Heard flagged up, yeah, it is important to point out that if members are so minded that uh, we flag up that the harm outweighs the benefits and that in this instance it would need to be significant harm because it's contributing to the housing land supply. Thank you, Alex. Oh, Councillor Hurd's uh, made a, a, a recommendation. Is that recommendation second? Councillor Sean, is he second the recommendation? Uh, members, we move to the vote on the, the amended recommendation. Um, could I have a show of hands for the recommendation, please? That's one, two, three, four, four. Those against, please. There are none. And those who wish to abstain? One. Thank you, members. So that new recommendation is passed. Thank you, members. Thank you, officers. We now move on to agenda item number six which is 21 slash 01334 slash FUL, the police station, West Square, Malden, Essex, CM9, 5PA. Miss Bowles, could you please uh, present the report on this issue? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So planning permission is sought for the change of use of the former police station to use costs. 
I'll just pause the meeting. While Apologies, I'll just assist um, the member of the public on the way out. One moment. Planning permission is sought for the change of use of former police station to use class E G offices. We've got the location and block plan. The existing elevations, there are no external alterations proposed to the building itself. We've got the existing ground first floor and basement level there's also no um, alterations proposed to the basement level so we've got the proposed ground floor plan the only external alteration is the addition of the cycle store to the rear of the building um, and as you can see in the corner it will um, that the details have been provided and that's what it's proposed to look like. Um, it is shielded from any public views. And then we've got the proposed first floor plan. And then we've got photographs of the area surrounding the site. And photos of the site itself. The proposed change of use of the currently vacant building is considered to have, a, have an acceptable visual impact on the site and surrounding conservation area and the residential amenity of the adjacent dwellings. Whilst the proposal conflicts with criteria 2 of policy E3, the benefits of the scheme are considered to outweigh this conflict. The proposed development would bring a building which is a non-designated heritage asset in a prominent town centre location back into a viable use. Um, and the, the support towards employment generating proposals is prominent within the LDP and the MPPF. Therefore, the proposal is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Hannah. Um, members, um, I'd like to open the debate. Uh, Councillor Nunn. Thank you, um, Chair. Well, I, I certainly welcome the conversion of this to officers on the basis that there will be no external alterations uh, to what okay isn't a designated heritage asset but is the gateway to the town and is a part of the town's history <coughs> however hannah mentioned through you chair um that there would be no internal alterations in the basement <coughs> but when i look at the document the proposal seems to include at 3.1.5 the demolition of the cells Thank you. Anna. Um, through you, Chair, one moment, let me just double check there. Three point one point five, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Anna. Through you, Ted, the cells are located on the ground floor. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So they, sorry, they, they are to be demolished? They are to be demolished, yes, but they are located on the ground floor, not the basement level. Thank you. Um, through you, Chair, I personally would like to see the retention of the cells as part of the integral story of the building. Thank you. Unfortunately, due to the designation of the building not being a statutory listed building, 
we do not have control over internal works such as the prevention of the demolition of that part of the building. Thank you. Councillor Lamb? Despite it being listed by Malden District Council as a heritage asset. Indeed, unfortunately it doesn't carry the legal weight of a statutory listed building. No comment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nunn. Councillor Hurd. Well, it's rare that I disagree with uh, uh, Councillor Nunn, but I don't mourn the loss of the cells. I, I know the building extremely well. Uh, I've never spent a night in the cells. Yeah. Uh, however, yeah. I do know them, uh, and I know that they were used uh, uh, mainly for storage. They, they, they're not really acceptable as office space. Uh, and like um, Councillor Nunn, I really am delighted uh, that something is going to be done with this this building. It is a complete eyesore uh, as things are at the moment. I'm uh, uh, greatly heartened by the fact that there'll be no external um, changes to that because um, I think it is a it is a, uh, a building of beauty. It does have a lot of architectural merit. merit, merit. Um, and at the end of the day, although it was a police station, it was used as offices. Uh, and it's going to be used as offices. It's not really suitable for um, uh, home accommodation, uh, but I'm I'm delighted with this um, application, and I would certainly support it. Thank you, Councillor Hurd. So it wasn't one night; it was a week, was it, in the cells uh, back in the day? <laughs> thank you, Councillor Swain. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Yes, um, I mean I, I can quite understand that um, the nature of cells don't really lend themselves to um, um, office accommodation, and, and um, uh, but I was in, intrigued by the statement that there's no changes being made in the basement. I, does that mean that they don't intend to use the basement, um, and, and therefore it is surplus? Um, Mike, uh, I have a point to, about the application. It's for Class E brackets G. Um, under the old system, I think this is an innovation, isn't it? Recently. Under the old system, you could switch between different parts of class E. Um, this application would be limited to the um, bracket G. It couldn't be, um, there couldn't be the scope to go to a different part of class E without permission. Um, indeed, class E, as you say, is a recent uh, innovation within the um, what is allowed as a permitted change of use, which doesn't require express planning permission. Um, I believe we have got a condition which restricts it to office use only. Is that correct? Which which condition is that? Condition number three, I believe, restricts it. So, uh, Chairman, if, if there weren't this uh, condition, then it would be possible for people to change within the different parts of Class C, even under this new arrangement. So this is specifically limited to G uh, in the application. Um, Yes, I, I think it's um, the question of how it was marketed. Um, the argument is a little bit thin. Um, it previously rejected on the grounds that it wasn't traditionally marketed as a community asset. Um, I'm not quite sure how you go about marketing some of these community assets, but it, we've, we've sort of reversed our position on very slim evidence. Um, my... Uh, principal uh, concern is not specifically about this application, so I hope you won't rule it out of order, but it's um, 5.6.2 where it refers to vehicle parking standards. And we have this statement that um, uh, the vehicle parking is considered adequate because of the existence of bus services and of uh, um, car parks in the town. This seems to me slightly um, nonsensical because what matters is, what is the position at the other end of the route that the office worker has? In other words, um, if there may, may be a bus there, and there may be parking in the town, um, but the point is that anybody coming in is going to have to use um, the car park because they, may, they don't necessarily have access to a bus route when they're out of town. I mean, otherwise, I would support this anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much indeed, Councillor Swain. Thanks. The point 
is in regard to obviously its town center location which does offer alternatives to using the car as a means of commuting um i i know from personal experience that uh there are a number of bus services that do connect to uh larger towns and cities in the region um and there is that opportunity there which is why we refer to it thank you Yes, Chairman, but this is the fundamental, a fad, fundamental point about this kind of area, mm -hmm. where most people do not, cannot really commute like that by bus, and are bound to have to use the car because of where they live, not ex not easily connecting to public transport routes. Yeah, we're, we're dealing with what we don't really know, Councillor Swain, isn't it? We don't know the people who are going to use the facility, where they're going to come from, how they're going to travel, so it's it's, it's the unknown. We can only deal with what, what's the fact of the matter that's in front of us. I'd also like to bring uh, to members' attention that uh, bicycle parking provision is included with this proposal as another alternative to the car. Thank you. Um, there's a couple of comments that I, I have, members, if, if you if you indulge me. One of them is very similar to Councillor Nunn. Although the, the cells are, are not protected, we seem to be very quick to remove a lot of the town's history and heritage. Um, and it's just a shame that these types of um, assets that are there and, and features that we may take out now won't be there for future generations because uh, like councillor heard i've never spent a night in the cells and um it, it's 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 the police station and it always will be morden's police station no matter what it becomes um, it was a wonderful entrance to the town giving people surety that the town is a safe place to come and, and to be welcomed in so um that's a, a, a very much a personal aspect and it'll be lovely if a developer turned around one day and said Actually, yeah, we'll, we'll keep a couple of these things, and we'll, we can do can do do some 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 good to support. The second one is about the chestnut tree. I note in the report that it is in the conservation area, so we don't feel that we need to condition it. I'm always nervous about a development and a tree, because once we cut it down, we ain't get it back. So, is it possible that that could be conditioned? Through you, Chair, a condition would, wouldn't meet the six tests because the protection is covered by other legislation right. and it would be an offence if they were to chop it down without approval right. from the council, which we obviously would not give. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank, some, you, Chair. thank you very much, but the punitive measures sometimes outweigh the, the benefit to others. I'm not saying that these developers would. Um, any other member? Oh, Councillor Hurd. I'm sorry to come back and have a second bite at the cherry, um, Chairman, but. Uh, I think if you uh, if you look at the building now, uh, as it is, as it presents itself now, um, it, it is a real eyesore. Uh, and I think that what we've got to bear in mind is it's a police building. Um, and we now have a police building. In fact, it's located within these offices. Uh, the fact is that Malden has grown uh, beyond the capability uh, uh, of that building. Uh, and consequently, there needs to be more room. There needs to be more room even here. So, so the town has actually outgrown that. But as I said, I'm heartened by the fact that, that it's going to look the same and remain the same. Mm. And uh, so I, I think that the loss of the, of, of the cells um, is lamentable, but I think it's certainly a price worth paying. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hurd. Uh, Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Chairman. Can I just go back to something that Councillor Swain was talking about, 5.63? Um, it states that there are nine car parking spaces uh, already de delineated, but the recommended sizes are not in line with our latest regulations. So will they be changed? Sizes of the bays, I mean. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Anna? Through you, Chair, it wasn't considered necessary to include a condition to ensure the bays were at the correct size, um, as there is no requirement for parking provision. Um, however, it can be included. We can ask them to do the amount of parking spaces to meet the bay sizes. Um, I believe it would meet the six tests if, if that is something you wanted to include. So we've got the correct bay sizes there. Thank you, but that will also reduce the car parking spaces, won't it? Hmm. That's a yes, yeah. Sorry. Really yes, yes. For, for Sorry. The recording. It would, yeah. The larger the car parking space, the, the less space we have spaces, unfortunately. 
Thank you. Uh, Councillor Shaughnessy and then Councillor Lan. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, in principle, I do agree with this proposal um, this evening, um, but I too am rather concerned about the um, the cells. Um, and Councillor Nunn and Councillor Heard uh, may um, put us straight on this, whether there um, is some sort of historical document about the cells, because at the very least that would be something mm. um, and, and, and something that, that Malden could hold on to. Um, they're not getting back to me, so perhaps, <laughs> so perhaps there isn't. Um, and um, and so, it, and, and if not, I think that would be um, a way to go. Um, should this proposal go through as it is? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Shaughnessy. Councillor Nunn, you were next. Yeah, I just um, could, if you wouldn't mind humouring me a moment, please, Chair. Could I ask Councillor Heard through you? Mm -hmm. Where are the cells? Are they in the ground floor or in the basement? Well, through you, Chairman, uh, they're actually on the ground floor. I think the ba the only thing I can think of about the basement must be the tunnel that goes through to the to old the court, cell. to yes. the old courthouse the court. in, in London Road. Um, that's the only basement I know of. Yeah, picking up on thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, picking up on um, what Councillor Shaughnessy said, I think it's a really important point. There should be. Uh, I, I don't suppose we can impose this. I'll be told that it's it's not you know. That's a statutory thing, but it would be good to have it recorded, photographed. Absolutely, in full agreement with that. Now, is that something we could look at? A condition recording uh, the history of site, yes, could meet the tests of reasonableness. Um, an informative could also be attached, um, advising of um, the historical importance of the cells. Um, I also wanted to say that in terms of the cells, the uh, the council's heritage specialists did take it into account and advised regret, but overall uh, concluded that the scheme would be acceptable. Thank you, Councillor Heard. Sorry, Chairman, this would be the last time I last time I speak. That's fine. Uh, That's I very mean, important. the fact that nothing is changing on the outside means that we've already got the word police right in front so you can mm. see that over the door so that already delineates that as as a police building um as i say uh, certainly the cells have no architectural merit at all mm. just a plain mm. brick small storeroom that's all they would be well i think one of the thing about art councillor Hurt, he's very subjective isn't it yeah <laughs> so what's one one person's uh, beauty is another person's eyesore um, we've debated this well, members, and I think I'd like to pick up on on the um, potential for putting a condition in um, to, to to capture the heritage of the cells and the tunnel. If we could do that, uh, members, um, please, that we could come up with a condition for that. Yes, that would be fine. We could have a. Uh, I mean, I'm not a heritage specialist, so I would might have to uh, consult uh, our heritage specialist on that. But it would it could read along the lines of. Uh, prior to uh, the implementation of the works, um, a record is taken of the layout um, and the historic fabric within the building. Um, having said that, one thing I am mindful of is that this application is for a change of use and the development would not technically occur until the change of use has actually happened. So, in fact, um, can I just liaise with the planning officer? Just bear with us, members and members of the public, please. If it's okay with you, Chair, we can uh, defer the matter of conditions for agreement with yourself once we have drafted them. Um, we will need to give consideration uh, to this particular condition that is suggested. The reason I'm flagging that up is because change of use is slightly different to uh, development that involves building work because with building work, the trigger can be as simple as something like demolition and therefore 
um, can be controlled more easily in terms of timings, whereas with this change of use, um, we would need to look at where the timings could start in terms of recording this history. I'm, I'm happy with that. Are members are in agreement with that? And not obviously liaise with members as well, because out of courtesy and respect for the knowledge we have in the room. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So we have a we have a recommendation on the table. Um, and the recommendation says approve subject conditions as detailed in section eight of this report, but we're going to not um, approve the conditions. We're going to defer the conditions. So we what would. You're sorry, just going to, sorry, you're just going to defer the condition around the record of the historical fabric of the building, but the other conditions can be approved tonight. You're just going to delegate the one condition around the recording of the fabric of the building to officers in consultation with the chairman, but the rest can be approved tonight. Yep, members happy? Yep. We'll go, yes, please, Bernard. Yes, thank you. That's lovely. So, members, we uh, is that clear on that that recommendation that's here? Do we have a second for that recommendation? We have a we have a fifty. Other. <laughs> I'll go for Councillor Hubner because you know, I saw your hand through the the glint of my rugby eye. Um, members, could I would we agree that by assent, or would you like to show hands on it? Or agreed? That's agreed by assent, Bernard. Thank you. Thank you very much, members. Um, Thanks again for your due diligence and care in debating these issues. They're absolutely vital to, to preserve what we've, we've got in the town. Um, we move on, members, to uh, agenda item seven, which is an appointment of a vice chairman. And before we do the call for this, members, um, Didn't we just agree uh, the amendment? Have we actually asked the officers to put that on? Did we not? So my understanding is we just passed the proposal with all of the outlined conditions, with the exception of the, the proposed condition, which will be left to delegation and agreement with the chair. Yep. I agree with that, Councillor Swain. So are we okay to move on? Yep, thank you. Um, so again, it's item number seven, appointment of vice chairman. And um, members, just before we move into it, I just want to say you know, thank you to all the members here in the room and those at home that that did vote for, for my good self as become chair of this committee. Um, and as you know, I'm very, very keen on, on, on working collaboratively. Um, and we can all sit in this room and remember the bad days when people were excluded from committees because of the political persuasion. And I think in fairness and transparency for, for people of the district, uh, I look at the political makeup um, and members and members of the public know I'm an independent member. Um, but I do feel that we, we need to, to share, to show transparency and equality, um, not go through what we went through as independents for, for previous administrations. So um, I'd like to move on to the appointment of a vice chair. And from the chair, I'd like to nominate Councillor Hubner as vice chair of the Central Area Planning Committee. Uh, can, any, can I second for that, Councillor Nunn? I think what you say makes um, absolute sense, Chair, and uh, I'm really pleased to see you in the chair as an independent councillor, and uh, I, I admire what you've said. I think we should have balance, uh, and we should um, lead this council uh, from positions like this together, and I would like to second the idea of a politically balanced uh, arrangement, even though planning is not a political issue mm. as such. And I would, um, I would like to second your proposal of Councillor Hoogner. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dunn. So, members, any other nominations? Councillor Hurd. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I think that uh, I think this nomination. Uh, I, I'm very pleased to see you in the chair, but I think the nomination is completely illogical. Um, I don't think it's got anything to do with uh, politics at all, but I think it is unfair. Uh, to expect Councillor Hubner, as a councillor with nine months experience um, to be given the task of um, a vice chair of this committee. Councillor Shaughnessy um, has six years experience uh, has, and, and is uh, uh, a member of this committee and always has been a member of this committee. And uh, so I, I have no hesitation in recommending that Councillor Shaughnessy um, should be vice chair. Can I call for a seconder? Councillor Edwards. Um, if I can come back, Councillor Hurd, just on, on the statement, 
I remember back in the bad old days when we had a plethora of, of new talent enter into the chamber uh, and some very seasoned heads that the new talent with the vibrancy and the experience that they bought uh, were excluded. And while I, I absolutely agree that Councillor Sean is a first class councillor, I think that we don't really know what somebody can bring to a position until that person brings to the position. Um, so members, we, we have two nominations. Uh, the first nomination both seconded so because the first nomination call from the chair was was the first nomination i think we we'll, should vote on that one first of all um, if that succeeds or if it succeeds if it fails then we move on to the second nomination um maybe are members happy with, with that members I, I think for this um this uh, agenda item i think we should call for a recorded vote is that seconded the council and unseconded thank you council and so, Berner, if um, if we could uh, do the roll call for the recommendation for Councillor Hubner uh, to be Vice Chair of the Council. Uh, Not the Council, he's, that's moving him forward a bit. Are you happy for me to call for both, for, for both of them an equal measure? So, uh, if, I, if I ask for... Ask members to vote uh, for their. If I call members' names in alphabetical order, and then they can say who they're voting for. Uh, Councillor Huebner or Councillor Shaughnessy. I'm happy with that, Bernard. That makes perfect sense. Being honest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Great. Thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, Chairman. Members, I will call your names in alphabetical order. Can you please state clearly, Councillor Huebner or Councillor Shaughnessy? Thank you very much. Starting with Councillor Edwards. Councillor Shaughnessy. Councillor Heard. Councillor Shaughnessy. Councillor Hubner. Councillor Hubner. Councillor Lagan. Uh, Councillor Hubner. Councillor Nunn. Councillor Hubner. Shaughnessy. Councillor Shaughnessy. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Swain. Councillor Shaughnessy. Thank you. Thank you, members. That's um, three for Councillor Hubner and four for Councillor Shaughnessy. Thanks very much, Bernard. And I'd like to congratulate Councillor Shaughnessy for becoming the Vice Chair of the Central Area Planning Committee. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Hurd. Um, I would also uh, like to. Um, pass my commiserations on to Councillor Hubner. It is certainly nothing political, uh, not at all. I think we should work together, and I hope we do. No, thank you, Councillor Hurd. I think it's absolutely mm -hmm. crucial that we don't make the mistakes of the past because we didn't serve the residents well uh, in, in, that, in that guise. Um, so we move on to uh, agenda item number eight. There's any other items of business that the chairman decides are urgent. Um, there are none. So members, um, I thank you for your contributions this evening. I now draw the meeting to a close at 8.33pm. And thanks very much and travel safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman.